We're here in, on the Inishowen Peninsula in the Ballyhallion River catchment. So all the rain that falls in the area, as it's falling in abundance today, will land within the Ballyhallion catchment and flow down into the river and then on into the sea. So this is one of the rivers and streams that goes into spate. It floods very easily and so it carries down a lot of sediment with it and a lot of nutrients and it also there's the potential for flooding then further downstream. So the Inishowen Rivers Trust are doing a natural flood management program here and what they've done here recently, very very recently, is put in what are called leaky log dams. So I'm, I must confess I'm kind of smitten. I'm, I'm like a, a flood nerd here. I'm really enjoying myself. These are, um, these are leaky log dams that basically sit composed, that are jammed into position, held in place with stakes on either side, because the force of the water coming down the river would be such that it would just wash them away otherwise. There's a base flow continuing underneath, so there's no real change in the base flow of the stream itself. So the stream can continue completely un uninterrupted, if you like. It's, um, it's very different from the farm drains that we've been looking at in that when you're working in streams you need the relevant permissions from inland fisheries and sometimes from the OPW, whereas for drain work where it's seasonal flows it's much more straightforward to just go in and do measures without, without a whole suite of permissions. But the permissions are needed just in order to make sure that we're doing the right thing in the right place, which is very important for any ecological work. So what we'll look at, this is the smallest one at the very bottom of the catchment area and you can see the work that's been done here very nicely put together by the, um, by the team that are doing the work to really anchor these posts into place. Look, they're rock solid there. They're very, very stable. So in a high flow, what will happen is the water will cake up against the edge of the stream, the edge of the logs, and there'll be woody debris washed down from the upper catchment that'll settle in behind the logs and cake into position, which means that there'll be a small pool that will form here and spill out over the dam and on into the catchment. So every bit of water that's held on here is water that isn't washed down into the catchment straight away. Now, the advantage of that is that as soon as the flooding ceases again and the rain stops, this water level will slowly bleed down again and flow back into the catchment and we'll get our base flows occurring once again. And what that means is that in the lower catchment, rather than getting these huge spikes after very heavy rainfall, there's a nice even flow that occurs throughout the year. Well, you know, give or take. It certainly helps move in that general direction. So let's follow up along and see what we can see of the other dams. This is the, this is the lowest and smallest one, and we'll, we'll see what else is here. So here, this is the second dam up from the Ballyhallion River. So we've got another leaky log dam here, and you can see there's quite a gap from the bottom of the log to the top of the water. I think ideally that might be a little bit lower, um, just in order to catch whatever brash comes down the hill. But in a high flood, I'm, I don't know the area very well, so in a high flood I'm assured that the volumes of water here are very, very significant, and that the water will spill out onto the wider shelf here beside it. So that'll all be held back in this area here, and, um, and, and stop from going straight down into the river in a spate. So again, it's very stable, and there's, you can see the way the dam is leaning back into the flow slightly. Whether that's by design or by accident, I'm not 100% not sure, but it can catch the, the flows that are going down and just contain whatever silt and, uh, and debris comes with it, particularly the debris. Do you know, the woody stuff and twigs and leaves will cake up against the side of the logs. Because here you can see there's, there's a lot of flow that will come in here before it begins to restrict the water movement, but if there's any twigs and stuff that gather, they'll help to slow it down. Let's take a look up onto the next one and see how they, how they progress. So here we are a little bit further up in the catchment and there's a three log dam here. So they're getting a little bit bigger as we move on up along the system. And when there's a high flow, what will happen is the water level will fill this small channel here, this small stream channel, and it'll come right up and begin to come up along the logs and finally overtop the logs completely. So woody brash and debris will gather and then when the storm abates that'll be washed away over time. It'll just compost down and the small twigs just break and move on and it'll return to the base flow again. But what, what's really useful for these systems is that the, the, the slow flow means that wherever there's natural pools within the system or natural wetlands further down along, these will slow down the flow enough so that any water that gets to settle lower in the catchment has time for silt to settle out, solids to just settle to the base, for nutrients to be taken up by plants, and for phosphorus and stuff to be settled out with the sediments. So it's a really, really good measure, measure for, I suppose, for limiting that, that very quick flush through the catchment that would otherwise carry nutrients through as well. 
So I'd, I'd really like to see this in a in a in a spate. I'm sure that the you know the people who put it in the Inishowen Rivers Trust will be you know sending photographs. But at the moment, it's um, it's it's looking lovely, you know. And they're just the fresh work that they've done is fantastic. Just to see it at this early stage in the project, and I'm looking forward to following it up in due course. Okay. So here, what I'm looking at here is just the just the construction. I'm just impressed at the way they've been put together. You can see that these Sitka posts have been driven right down into the ground, but not only that, these poles extend right back into the far bank. So they've been sharpened at the ends and pushed in with a machine. Over at the far side then, you can see there's a lot of digging has gone on there. So this area has been dug right out to here, right out to the edge, and those logs extend right the way in and they've been braced in position because when that flood hits, it's going to take a lot of, you know, it's, it'll bring a lot of weight with that water. So it needs a lot of, a really good anchor point in the middle of it. And you can see at the base, you can see the way the leaves are gathering. I don't know if you can get that shot just there. The leaves are gathering on the base of the stones as it is. Just the way they're accumulating there like that. There's twiggy branches. And it's this kind of thing in high, in very high storms that will wash up against those edges and form a natural seal and just to slow down the flow of water and then as the water levels drop again they just wash away again afterwards. So it's, um, it's just interesting as part of the wider catchment management. It's a, it's a very, very constructive method, particularly in areas where over many generations the hillsides have become much barer. You know, traditionally there would have been forest cover in a lot of our upland areas. And without that forest cover, we lose water into those wider catchments much more quickly. So leaky log dams are one way just to, you know, temporarily put back in some sort of a holding area for water. Ideally, we get the forest cover back up there as well. So this is the, we're at the midpoint at this point, And this is the largest dam that's on this, um, on this tributary, probably the largest dam in the project, I think. And basically we've got five logs here. It's been, again, very, very solid anchored well in either side, put together by, by Inish Forestry. And what's happening, you can see again here, you can see where I'm standing here, I'm well behind the level of the, the top level of the dam here. And the stream is a little bit further down again. So in a high flow, that's a large volume of water that will be stored here. So that, that'll hold it back for a few minutes. It doesn't sound like an awful lot, but cumulatively, I think there's 11 dams along this particular tributary, 11 leaky log dams. And what will happen is that it'll hold the water and slow it down for about half an hour. And that half an hour is enough to just pull out, draw out that curve, that, that flood peak that comes along with a particular storm event. So when there's a heavy deluge on the hills, rather than having that whizzing straight down to the nearest area and causing flooding problems, these will hold it back and slow it down by half an hour in this location. And that's it, half an hour in total for all of the dams. And that's a really, really important service just to slow the flow throughout the catchments in the whole area. And throughout the catchments in the whole country, you know, it can be rolled out everywhere. And, um, and it, you know, it'll, it'll help with other aspects as well, because by having these log, leaky log dams here, what you do is you prevent scour in other areas along the catchment. So the biodiversity benefits, the plant life at the edges benefits, you hold the soil back, and in holding the soil, do you hold the soil back just in the areas where there are pools further down naturally within the catchment. And overall, just the overall catchment protection goes up and the flood protection increases as well. Lovely. Lovely workmanship. It's really, really nicely put together.